Good afternoon, Schomburg family. My name is Novella Ford, and I am the manager of public programming here at the Schomburg Center. We are so pleased to have you all join us this afternoon. Want to let you know that following the screening, we will have the filmmaker Carol Bash in conversation with Asia Burrell Woods, who is uh, a professor here at the New School and the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music. So please enjoy Mary Lou Williams, the lady who swings the band. Good afternoon. Um, and so the journey began 12 years ago, because that's how long it took to make this film. Wow. Um, so it was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> and it really started with her music. And my father-in-law is a jazz fan, a jazz head. And so he was playing Mary Lou, Mary Lou Williams on the stereo. And what I heard was just so incredibly fresh and funky and vibrant, and this, again, 12 years ago. Um, and I just asked him, I said, you know, who is this playing? And he said, that's Mary Lou Williams. She's one of the greats. And, and I was like, who? <laughs> Never heard of this. What? Yeah, um, what insight did you gain on on maybe what her what her thinking was, what her ideas were, that, um, or experiences? I would say that um, she saw herself as one of the boys. Mm -hmm. I mean, she knew she was a woman, mm -hmm. but she was she she didn't differentiate her behavior along gender lines. Mm -hmm. you, know? you have this moment in the film um, discussing like her counterparts, right? Like um, with Hazel Scott and Lena Horne. And what were those relationships like? You know? And what were her relationships with her, with her women counterparts? And, um, and how was she processing all of that? Um, her relationship with Hazel Scott, though, actually was very good. She had, they, they were very close, even though I'm sort of setting her up as a foil to Mary Lou. In, in actuality, there was a, Hazel really looked up to Mary Lou and, and there was a sisterhood. Yeah. And she felt slighted by the industry. Right. You know, and how she was being treated by the business. Mm -hmm. So I don't think her focus was on, oh, that Lena right. Horn, she's so beautiful and <laughs> light skinned. Mm -hmm. It's more like, I have so much talent, and yet I'm not being treated in the way that I feel that I should be treated because of my talent. So it wasn't directed towards other women. And it seems that she is more apolitical. Uh, why? Or, or can you speak to that? You know. Um, yeah, I can. Basically, she. It's interesting. I read in one of her manuscripts where she had an argument with Max Roach. Really. Um, because at that point, Max Roach was coming up with um, uh, uh, Freedom Now, the Freedom Now suite, him and Abby Lincoln. And she says, why are you being, you can't be so political, you know, with the music. The music should just speak for itself, you know. Real problems with artists who use their art to, politis, to be political. So she had, it, she took issue when people did do that. Yeah, she did. Um, her legacy, though, was, you know, she, had, she was very close to her family. She had um, nephews and nieces. Um, but I would say her legacy is really her, the, the fellow, her fellow musicians. But what the, the conversion and, and working with the priest did to her, did for her, was to give her a, a, a new sense of peace and calm. So she always saw visions even to the end of her life, but they weren't haunting. You know, her music, she once again saw music as her solace, and, and she looked at you know, composing the sacred music as a way of giving thanks and bringing people into the beauty and the spirituality of jazz. And so her music was just an extension of, of what she was feeling and she wanted to transmit that. Well, thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you to the Schomburg and please follow the Before Five series. Have a wonderful day everybody. Thanks for coming.